This is the unboxing and review of the Full Mechanics Gundam Raider from Seed. We have here the Full Mechanics of the Raider Gundam. This is a 1 100th scale model kit. There is not, I believe, a master grade version of this, so it was released as a Full Mechanics, and the Full Mechanics line was a way of releasing 1 100th scale model kits at a cheaper price point than the Master Grade, so they were slightly less detailed in the beginning. But the Master, uh, the Full Mechanics has become very um, comparable to a Master Grade in quality over the years. So if you're looking for a 1 100th scale, especially on a mobile suit that doesn't have a model kit as a Master Grade, definitely go with the full mechanics because it is going to be worth um, getting. So like any kit, you have some nice cover art showing the mobile suit in action. On the sides, you have some photos. We've got the mobile suit completed on a stand. I believe the stand is going to be separate from the, it's not in the kit itself. It also shows the transform form of the uh, mobile suit. And even though the picture does show the calamity there, it's not, it doesn't have the calamity. It's just that it shows the calamity riding the transformed raider because that's what it does in the, in the anime. And then we have some more photos here of the front and back and some gimmicks that are part of it and such. And actually, it looks like we might get a, uh, a stand to help uh, do some action poses with the mace pieces separate from uh, the mobile suit. So let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. And I'll just set the manual aside for right now. Now, this being a uh, 1 100th scale and, of course, the size of the box, there are quite a few runners in here. So what we have here is we have our A runner, which has, like many A runners are, it's multicolored. So we've got our yellow, we've got kind of a pale green, we have a green clear piece, and then the rest is this kind of almost, almost bluish gray. Much more gray than blue, but there's definitely a blue aftertone to it. So, this is your A runner. We've got our B runner, which has our black pieces. It looks like a lot of this is outer armor or inner frame. Same thing with this, but probably some backpack stuff. This is your C. We've got a couple of C's. Got a C1 and a C2, which for a good chunk of it are duplicated. As you can see, the middle parts are, they just have the two pieces at the end that make them uh, have unique pieces on them, which is typical for a, 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 a kit like this when, they, when there's lots of common uh, pieces that have to be used, like, you know, opposite sides of a uh, of a backpack or something like that. We have two D-runners also in the black. Looks like there's a lot of black, a lot of gray. This here is E1 and E2. It looks like this is a repeat. There's a few extra pieces, but we've got some repeats here. Oh, looks like we definitely do get a clear stand for the um, for the mace and a wire to be able to connect the mace. The wire is not going to be strong enough to hold the mace head up. That's why they have the stand in here so you can hold the mace head up but have it connected back to the mobile suit in order to, to make it look like it's still connected. We have here the what letter is it? F1, and we have an F2. And yep, there's a little bit of duplication. It looks like it's 
Yeah, right here. This is unique, but duplicated in the middle once again. We have, this is the G. Oh, we have two Gs. Looks like it's inner frame stuff and maybe some outer, you know, backpack stuff or side skirts. We have uh, H1 and uh, smaller H2, which probably means that this is also duplicated. Yes, it is. It's these pieces here. I just have one upside down. There we go. Yeah, there we go. It's this, this right here. Looks like these might be foot pieces. Especially this right over here. Hmm. And then we have a couple runners, the I1 and the I2, which is the red pieces. So, that's that for the runners. And then we have the, we do have some color correcting stickers. It looks like the only thing that the color correcting stickers are for is the eyes and the camera lenses probably on the head. That's very typical. Even on a, even master grades do that quite often. Now, for some reason, <laughs> I think this is just a manufacturing mistake. I have three copies of the, the decals. And so I think, I think these just stuck together and I wound up getting three. I hope that doesn't mean that there are two other model set kits that didn't get any. Um, but, uh, so, cause I, I don't think there's supposed to be this many. I'll check in the manual at first, but, um, these are, these feel like they're more like the realistic decals. So they should be thinner because they feel satiny like the realistic ones do and I know that with other kits like the new um, Master Grade uh, Super Deformed that kit also had included the um, these types of stickers that were more like the realistic ones so it's good to know that Bandai is kind of shifting towards these type of stickers as opposed to the kind of glossy um, very, uh, much thicker. I mean, we're talking, you know, millimeters, but much thicker because these don't show as bad on the model kit itself, except for certain colors, like blue is always going to show, really, um, in, in bluish type colors. But with the realistic ones, if, if they're as thin as those, you can put some softener on that blends it in even more, which is difficult to do with the thicker ones. Now, I prefer to work with water slide decals, so I have gotten a set of um, water slide decals to work with. Now, I thought this was a, unfortunately, this is a knockoff brand. I thought this was uh, just a, you know, a third party that I normally do business with, but I re later realized that this is trying real hard to mimic the packaging that Bandai uses and the that symbol down here is of another company called uh, Snowprint or something like that. So I think this is a knockoff. So who I, I'll have to see how good these are, whether or not I'm going to use these or stick with the regular stickers or not. So I should have been more diligent when I took a look at it. So you got to be careful when you buy water slides to make sure that they are actually a reliable company. Um, but like I said, I don't know if these aren't reliable, but I do know that they're knockoffs. So in the manual, we, you know, it, it's reproduced the cover, uh, artwork on the cover of the manual and it goes in here and it shows all the runners and the decals that you get. And it doesn't say that there's three. So I, have to assume that this is a manufacturing error that I got three. So the nice thing is looking at this, everything is PS plastic, so you don't have to worry about whether any thing that you use for panel lining will damage the plastic like it would if there was ABS. So 
And that's a good thing. So then it goes through and, it's, and essentially just goes step by step. It looks like with this one, it's starting with the arms. And there's a little bit of indi there's indication here on for each section which runners the section is going to be dealing with for each body part that's being um, put together. So that's kind of nice. You can kind of get all the the runners. Now it looks like this one might be every single one, <laughs> but if you're but if you're looking at like the chest unit, then you just have a few and you can get those together and know that those are the ones you're going to be working with and getting the pieces off of instead of working, you know, trying to sort through all of them all at once every single time. So, yeah, so it looks like it starts with the arms and then chest and head and then eventually goes to work its way down. So, yeah, and then at the end is normally the shield and the weapons and all that kind of stuff. And then it also gives an explanation on how to do the transformation so that you can go into the, um, I guess it would be the uh, mobile armor mode as opposed to mobile suit mode. So, and yeah, there's some things here that show how to connect things for the, for the mace piece and the, uh, the mobile armor side that has this little extra support to make sure it doesn't tip and stuff like that. So that's actually pretty cool. So, and since there is a, um, oh, and that, that's why, so that it doesn't tip when you actually want to have the Calamity ride on it, and it's able to fit the, the Calamity right into it, so that's pretty cool. And since this has, is expecting decals, it's got the marking map here that shows, and the water slide numbers on there will correspond with what's on the Bandai uh, stickers. So you can use the water slides in the same way. And then on the back, it's got your painting guide, which is your, your color mixes if you want to do painting. And then some, it reproduces the pictures that are on the box itself. And this is a, this is a newer kit. So throughout the manual, there'll be your, the Japanese explanations, but they'll be the translated in English as well. So that's always nice. So that just about does it. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you for the next one. Here is the completed full mechanics Gundam Raider from the Gundam Seed series. And this is a pretty decent uh, model. This is the first full mechanics that I've done. Um, this is one of the newer ones. Um, the earlier full mechanics were all of Iron-Blooded Orphans. And then they decided to do a few seed ones. In fact, they got a new one coming out towards the end of the year, I believe. And they've also started doing some full mechanics on for, um, which from Mercury, they've got the aerial coming out as well. And, um, so what, what they did is with the Iron Blooded Orphans, there was two series and with the seed and the, which from Mercury, they're all considered part of the same series, even though the box says, you know, we'll say Seed or Witch from Mercury in the emblem for the full mechanics, similar to what happened with the Iron Blooded Orphans once they switched over to the name Full Mechanics. But they seem to be now they're just going to be kind of like Master Grade, where whatever suits they do, they're just going to keep them, and, and they don't do the actual numbering anymore. They did do the numbering with the two seasons of um, iron Blood Orphans that they did. So if, if you're looking to, to be able to keep track of the number and make sure that you got them all, uh, you won't be able to do it with a numbering system, but you can go ahead and look at um, Gundam, uh, the Gundam Wiki, um, and that will give you all the full mechanics 
that are all the models that are available and stuff like that. That's what I've done to keep track. So it, it is it is a pretty hefty one. I mean, it is a one one hundredth scale, so it's going to be definitely heavier than um, a HG. But this is this this does feel good in the hand. There are a few loose part areas. Where like the front, this front skirt, this has never been tight. It was loose right out of the box, um, and a few other little places. Sometimes the little mechanisms. I'll get to that when when the articulation happens. Sometimes the mechanisms don't work quite right um, when you, when you're manipulating them and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll get into that with the uh, articulation portion of this review. And th this is the type of mobile suit that does transform. So I'll also go over the transformation on this. It's actually a pretty simple transformation. The manual does a great job of explaining exactly how the uh, transformation should work. There's a couple little things that I'll go over. A couple pla places where you got to get things in just the right position to get them to lock in type of thing. But overall, it's pretty straightforward and, and easy to work with. Um, I do like this. This was easy to build. Um, you know, the instructions were there, were good. The pieces fit together well. Um, they do have the hands here, which are kind of a combination of, it does have an articulated thumb, but then it also has the type of hands where you, you separate the, the other fingers and just put in a new one for either a gripping hand or a trigger finger hand. There, there aren't a lot of accessories for this model, but there are a few. So there, there's, you know, there's only one hand for the right, uh, for the left side, and two for the right. The right has a gripping and a trigger finger, and the left only has a gripping. So, and this, this is kind of the standard for the Raider, where you have these claws that have a can have a gun in them. Uh, the backpack is pretty nice. It's mostly, most of the decals and stuff are on the back, and most of the, other than even the decals, the detail is all in the back. And it does make this quite a back, he back heavy kit. Also, probably the little, oh, the thrusters here don't, you know, add a little bit to it, but not a whole lot. Um... But what I was doing is, with the backpack, in order to get it to be able to stand up straight, I would be putting the weapons in the hands and kind of having them out a little bit, and that does the balance that you need. Or if you don't have the weapons and you just have to, you know, kind of move it around a little bit to make sure that, you know, a foot or something is going to give it a little bit more forward balance and stuff like that. Now, this is not directly out of the package. Um, what I did do is I did do some panel lining, and you can see it mostly in the face for this part. And I did, you know, other details have been panel lined. There's not a whole lot of panel lining that is visible because a lot of, as you can see, that the model is a lot of dark colors, mostly this black. And panel lining on the black doesn't show. <laughs> I tried multiple ways to do it multiple different colors and stuff like that. It just didn't look good, so I didn't bother panel lining them. But, you know, the red and stuff like that, I panel line like I do with all the other ones or the, in the yellows. This also, uh, I did a combination with this one of water slide decals and some of the uh, actual stickers that came with it, which are more of the realistic st uh, sticker style where they're satiny and, and a bit thinner. So the reason why I decided to use some of the um, the actual stickers instead of just all water slides is because the it turns out that the water slides that I purchased were knockoffs. So for the most part, with the white and just pure red and other areas, they look good. But there are certain things like this right here where you have some red and white where the, you know, the writing might be in red and there might be some writing in white. And those did not look good at all with the water slides that I got. So I decided to use the stickers for those cases. There were maybe 
you know, eight places, eight stickers that I wound up using instead. Uh, the rest were all the water slide decals. And then once I got all the water slides on there, then I also did a uh, matte uh, top coat for this to just protect everything. So this, it, you know, so this has done, had a little bit more work done than just put it together and stuff like that. So, um, but you know, it, it was definitely worth it because it does make things just stand out, especially with this green and the yellow and the red, it really stands up out nicely. And even this light gray, because I used a black panel liner on here and, and it makes things just pop out just a little bit more, which is what would be expected from panel lining. So. It, it, it didn't take a lot to do. There weren't a whole lot of places to have to worry about it. And it was definitely worth it. And for the size of the model, I was surprised at how few decals actually were put on it. Uh, you know, it just there, there might have been like two or three per side on the legs and arms. And then here on the shoulder, there's very few. But, they're, but they, ought, they do make a difference, you know, especially here on the backpack. You know, you've got some nice detail there on the backpack from the um, the decals and such. So. so let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories. Like I said, there aren't a whole lot of accessories that come with this. So one thing that we do have is we have the double-barreled cannon uh, that comes with the um, with the, with the model, and it does have this this different type of let's see here we have this we have the trigger finger hand or at least the trigger finger fingers that you pop in order to put this on if it, it fits nicely with this right here for the for the handle coming out and what you would do is you would pop out can be a bit stiff. You pop out the gripping fingers. I need to use the separator. You would pop out the gripping, the fingers, you would put this on here and it fits nicely. right in to be able to hold on to it. Oops. Of course, it's not going to do it for me now that I'm trying to show. <laughs> and then this gets pushed into here. Now you got to get it Kind of right in order for it to fit in there. Another thing you can do is you can just put these on. For this one it's easier to put the fingers in. There you go. You put the fingers in and then this just fits right into the palm. Whoop. You gotta get this in there properly. It can be a little bit tricky. just a little slot that the thing goes into. There we go. And it, I mean, it's pretty much exactly sized. There we go. I'm trying to get on both. There we go. So you get that in there. And then this fits right in to the palm. And you can move this and then you just attach it right there. Or the other way that you can do hold on to the gun is if you push this forward like this, 
then it has this little attachment here. And that goes right in between here and fits right into the and fits right onto the arm. There's a few things that as you're manipulating things it'll come off, but so then it fits right there on the arm. Now one one kind of a oh I guess it's not so bad. The arm this arm joint here sometimes comes apart just you know what holds the arm into the shoulder because what happens, especially when this is on it, if the arm is fully up, it can it can catch on the side here and can kind of, you know, be in the way. And especially if you have the arm bent. So sometimes the gun can get in the way of the, of the shoulder and stuff like that. And there's not really a good way to get the shoulder armor out of the way because you can't just lift this up on its own. It brings everything up with it. So that, that's kind of a pain. So that's the, that's the double barreled rifle there. And then the other thing it has, and this can go into either gripping hand, and there's, you've got to kind of manipulate it where the, the gripping part, you know, the, the, the grip part has to be kind of in the, in the, in, go, go from the inside out. And there's little slots that this fits into. In both hands have it the same way. But you you really got to get the you got to be holding on to it the right way in order to get it in there. There we go. So yeah, it just kind of fits in there. And if it doesn't go on real easily, then you just you just need to turn it so that you're doing it from the other side because it'll go on real easy once once you get it in the right orientation. One of the cool things about this is that it has a wire spooled in there and this this you put together when you're doing the kit and it pulls out pretty far now the wire is not going to be strong enough to hold that up but what it does have is it has this extra stand here where this fits right into this hole this small hole right there so that you can pose it you know, in front of the, you know, have it held on, and this can be wherever you want it to be. So that's good. And then in order to spool it back in, th th there's, there's two of these that move. You just spin it, and it'll bring it right back in. And, you know, you, when, when you're, you know, it comes with the wire and, and in here there's basically a spooling tube that you attach the other end of the wire to and stuff like that. And then when you put the handle on, you just kink it in to a locking me mechanism in there and, it, and everything works together. So that, that's actually pretty cool. And, of course, the hammer is named Milnor. What else would it be called? <laughs> Why can't I get that focus? There we go. So, but anyway, and I mean, it's more of a morning star than a hammer, but hey, what are you, what are you going to do? So, and, and those are pretty much the accessories that are there. The, the only other thing is that in order to get this onto a stand, you know, onto a stand is you basically take off the backpack and you have this. Thing right here which goes into this slot and then this pointy part right here goes into underneath it so that it just kind of fits right in like that and then the stand is attached to there using the you know using 
the, I forget what number this attachment is, but it's the one that allows you to go from peg to peg. Basically every stand will have that type of attachment. And then, whoops, I got that backwards. And then this would attach back to the model right into there, you know, because it's got the rectangular peg that is seems to be typical of um, the larger one by uh, one one hundred scale. OK, well, why don't we get into the articulation now that we've gone over the accessories and such. So there is some movement here on the on the backpack with the wings, but there's really no reason to ever do that because even in the transform mode, the wings are just like this. Um, so this is basically just so you can put them on because see what happens is there's a li it's basically a, a tongue and groove type setup where you have to line up the the tab with the hole to be able to slide it in and then once you've got it there you turn it down and it locks it into place but in in order to do the transformation some of the art there is this here for the articulation on the wing on the backpack wings so each side does that and you just kind of pull one side out and sit there until you've got them both down so that basically the tip of this just is right like that so that's the that's the transform backpack right here there we go let's take this off there this moves a little bit the thruster right here you can point that and also, which is strange because this isn't really shown as part of the transformation. But this can go up. This right here, I just had to use the... This can go up and it's got a little gun in there. to focus on there but let me put this down maybe that's why there we go it's got the little gun in there so but the interesting thing is that really isn't shown as part of the transformation so I'm not sure if that was kind of an afterthought to put that in or or what so when you do the transformation, the pictures all show this closed, you know, the, 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 this part closed. So, alrighty, so let me just get this off. There, there's, there's no articulation ex on this except for moving the handle back and forth to do a grip or to do a, um, you know, or, or to put it on the arm. Or actually, this also is done. This part right here, when it's in transform mode, also can be put in here, just like it can be put here. It can be put right on here, and I'll show you that during the transform stuff. You got the head. It can turn from side to side. It's a very interesting mechanism how, how this goes on. It, it is a ball joint, but you don't just snap the head on. You actually put the before putting the back piece on, you actually put the head on the front of the ball joint and then you snap the back piece of the head on and that keeps it in place. So this can move forward, up and down, left and right type of thing. There's some forward movement with the, um, with the neck here. We've got the shoulders that can go up and that's really just more for movement of the uh of the arm 
this has an interesting mechanism where it can kind of give you a little bit more articulation in the shoulder by t pulling this out, but doesn't do a whole lot. Each arm has a double joint. Unfortunately, the, you know, the, the shoulder armor does get in the way of the second joint, but it does have the double joint. The hand, the thumb, and th this is for both hands, whether it's the grasping hand or the trigger finger hand, the thumb has a ball joint so it can move all over. And then this can twist and has the ball joint for some flexibility and stuff like that. Yep, see that, that happens from time to time that comes off. Um, here, uh, we've got the, you know, the forward skirts can move up and such, and then you can do the leg and move up a little bit. There's not a whole lot. The knee has a double joint. And there's on, you can only move the toe. Whoop, sorry. The knee has a double joint right here. And you can only move the toe on the foot. And there's a little bit of movement in the ankle, but not a whole lot. And you can't really twist. You can kind of... There's not a whole lot of twisting that happens. And then this can move a little bit down and, and up. And then when you do the transform, it can do a bit more movement, and I'll get to that. And then the back skirts can move as well. I did, I did nip the middle so that these will move independently. Normally these are front skirts. In this case, they're the back skirts. Um, and then we've got the side skirts, and they can move. And then these claw bits have quite a bit of articulation in that. And I'll just take one of these off to show all the articulation that happens here with this. It can, it can move all the way out. You know, that this can lock into place. This can turn here. It can move back and forth. Each side can move out. And then this top part can move out to make a wider thing. And then it can just all fold right back up into into place here. And that's pretty much it for the articulation. I mean, you, you can go out to the side a little bit. I guess you can move it all the way out as long as as long as the side skirts are out of the way, you can move the leg up. But there's not a whole lot that you can do. Very little movement in the ankles side side to side. Um, so there's not a whole lot of articulation beyond just some basic movements and stuff like that. Okay, the next thing to go over is the transformation, and I'm just going to take one of the legs off. I've already got one of the arms off. Because those are the main parts of the articulate. You know, those are the, the main parts of the articulation. Um... And I've also got these. I've I've already shown what the what the transformation is for the the backpack, which is this on each side. Um, this here is designed to be basically at the bottom, like claws, and the transformation. This that goes here, you can bend it all the way over. Just go as far as you can. And then that will, the way that it 
hooks up will give you the claws going down when everything is put together, everything is ready and in place. You might have to turn this to get the claws to be where you want it to go. But that's what, uh, that's what the, these, these two side skirts essentially are the claws for when the, you know, think of it as a bird and these are the claws that it's going to be attached to or that's going to be standing on essentially. Um, the leg, it has a couple of things that gets, get done. Um, one, the toe clicks all the way down and gets out of the way here. This bends and then goes all the way up and locks in like that. Okay. And then this thruster, which, you know, the, I'm sorry, I forgot to, in, in, you know, the thrusters move a little bit. I forgot that in the articulation part, but push this all the way up. It look, it doesn't feel like it's going to do it, but it will. It goes all the way up. And essentially, when this is put together, this part, the, the, this part of the leg is at the top. It is point is at the top of it, so that's how the hips move in. And then with the hips, the joint here has two places it can go. It can either be up, which is normally where it is when you're standing and doing on uh, poses like that. But then for the transformation part, you want this to be all the way down like that. So that everything locks in and stuff like that. So, and that's all pretty straightforward in the instructions with that working. And then the one thing I did want to go over is, oops, just put that back over there, is the arm. So what what you do for the arm is there's a there's a joint here at this end. So you just pop this up, and in here, there's a gun that you pull all the way out, and you got to get everything exactly as it needs to be. So this, you kind of just move the arm out of the way. Sorry, I'm doing this in front of myself instead of in front of the... So, you got the, you got the gun out. The arm, eventually what's going to happen is this part is going to just fit right into this little gap here. And in order to get that to happen, is you just kind of pull this, you just kind of Take that down. There we go. You got to make sure that this, the shoulder part here is up as high as it will go so that this, let's see here, this will fit in like that. And then this folds down into there so that this can close. And then when this is put together, let me just put this back on here. These will be the forward-facing guns, essentially, on each arm. So these will be the forward-facing guns because it'll be like this. Or actually, sorry, it'll be more like this, actually, because the head's going to be pointing down. And then the other thing to point out is that the 
you push the head down and this little part kind of moves out so that you can push so you push that down and then this goes back so that that's out of the way and then everything just you know basically looks like this when everything is when the transformation is completed and then uh, th this always comes off especially when I'm doing the transformation and then here here's what the claws would look like you know you would you would move these to where they need to go as the as the manual shows so that these are the claws that kind of it's it can stand on like a bird so here we have the mobile armor form after it's been transformed. So it does have this, there's a couple pieces that get attached in order to facilitate adding it to a mount and such like that. There is this little foot right here that allows it to clip onto the, um, the, the base that is also used to give you the mace out action so this clips on here a couple of right there and then it clips in here with this being the main peg and this part of the mace which normally would be covering the little gun outlet gets moved slightly and that's where this peg goes in and then this one here goes into that little part there to hold on to it the second thing that can be put on is right here this is just kind of slotted in there. It goes up from the bottom and it slots in where there's a couple of grooves. So that's this right here. So you can actually have a, um, you know, use a stand like this to just kind of go right in there and have it straight out type of thing. So you would have to separate the legs to give it more room you might be able to clip the legs back together once it's attached. But um, I haven't played with it much. So, let's see here. It fits in here. It's using the adapter which allows the peg to accept another peg. So, it's awfully heavy. have to tighten the screw on here. It's gotten a bit loose. But that's that's that and yeah it looks like you wouldn't well I guess actually if you move it up there we go maybe if you move the legs up further it's always difficult to remember which side goes on which there's a couple of slots it could just be that the there we go yeah, I guess you can. You actually can. Once you get that in there, then you just kind of move the legs further up, and then you'll be able to clip them back together. So you could also have it coming at you like this. So overall, I do really like this kit. I do like this model. Um, I think the transformation is really cool and very easy to do. Once you know all the little tricks and stuff like that, and, you know, even just, it didn't take me long to figure out how to get the arm in the right place and stuff like that. So, you know, you just kind of look in the instruction, you see where, how it's supposed to fit in there, and then you go, okay, how do I make that happen? And, you know, it, it really is very straightforward. And it looks pretty cool, as you could tell from the final transformation, that, it does look really nice. And the nice thing about the transformation is that if you build the full uh, mechanics calamity, it can actually be mounted on that as well. Just like it does in the anime, it, the calamity normally rides the transformed raider into battle. So that's pretty cool. So 
I, I do believe, even though there's some, you know, there there's some annoyances with pieces that are loose and, you know, pieces that might come off from time to time as you're manipulating them. But, you know, I, I'm the type of person that once I build it and once I do some small poses and stuff like that, I tend to just put it in a final pose and then put it on my shelf and it doesn't come down again type of thing. So... And I do think that this is representative of what the Full Mechanics is. You know, one, they went through, I haven't built any other ones, but they have gone through two iterations of series with the Iron-Blooded Orphans, and then they started with the Seed ones, and this was one of the original three that were done, or sorry, original two that were done, and they've got the third one coming out. Uh, you know, because we got the Raider, we got the Calamity, and now they're going to be doing the Forbidden, which are the three that fought together in Seed in the second half of the series. And so I think this is very representative of what a full mechanics is and what it, what it's supposed to be. And so as far as a grade, I would de I would give this an A because it is representative of what it's supposed to be. And the articulation, even though it's not fantastic, it's not horrible either. And the transformation really does make up for, you know, any lack of articulation because you, there can't be a lot of articulation, I don't think, if you want things to move in a specific way so you can do the transformation. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you for the next one. Thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. If you would like notifications as to when new videos are posted to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you do have time, please do enjoy one of the videos that are popping up around my head.